What's up everyone, today I want to do a video talking about growing with only a single bottom tray instead of two bottom trays like we usually grow. So stay tuned for the video. Okay guys, this video is actually something that I just kind of want to spontaneously do because it's a question that I've commonly got is, can you grow microgreens only using one tray and not using the bottom watering technique like we use in all of our videos? And the answer is yes, you can, but it does come with its own set of challenges and obstacles that you need to overcome. So I'm going to be talking about that in this video. So first of all, what I've done is we had a crop of sunflower that I was getting ready to harvest and this was grown on a single tray there is no bottom tray on this this is the bottom tray right here and there's nothing below it. it is simply grown directly into this tray and it was grown the entire process without bottom watering it was top watered the reason we really like bottom watering is that you're not pouring water directly on top of your crop like you do in top watering. And the reason we don't prefer to top water is that it actually traps a lot of moisture within the canopy and it leaves the crop a little bit wet for harvest time and that's not really something that you want. Now the way to get away from the moisture being trapped in the canopy from top watering is actually by not watering it for a period of time. So what we have done is we have not watered this since last night. This has just been allowed to dry out and as you can see in the canopy itself, there is a tiny bit of moisture on some of these cotyledons, but for the most part, it is actually pretty dang dry, which means that this product is gonna last longer than if it was covered in moisture, which really does encourage it to break down and decompose a lot faster. Another downside of top watering is that if you don't have a crop like sunflowers, which are really hardy and sturdy, is that say it's a crop like maybe Swiss chard, or an amaranth or something. I don't have any amaranth over here, but what happens is when you top water crops like that, they'll actually get pushed over by the weight of the water. They'll fall down and they'll just spend kind of uh, quite a while just trying to stand back up. And it really does slow down the growth. It makes the, all the plants kind of stick together and they create trap more moisture. So it's a little bit of a pain that using smaller crops other than like say like peas, sunflowers, things that are really big and hardy do a lot better with top watering. Now this is not to say that you can't top water broccoli. You absolutely can. It's just, you gotta be a little bit more careful. Make sure your pressure for your water, whatever you're using for your source, say if you're just like trying to pour in a cup of water or whatever you're trying to do, be careful that you don't just like chunk it at your microgreens and knock them all over because it will delay the growth and it'll just cause some issues down the line potentially. It makes them like really wavy in their stem and you just don't want that. You want a nice strong looking product that's standing up nicely and you're not forcibly pushing it over. So now how did I grow this single tray of sunflower microgreens without a bottom tray like I said? So all I did was I took a single bottom tray, I filled it with some cocoa coir. So I've got my cocoa right here underneath our shelf. And just to kind of give you guys an idea, I like to use a measuring cup that's two cups, and I do a total of three scoops. Try not to fill it all the way over. And the reason I do three scoops is because I like to use about six cups of cocoa coir per tray. Now you can go a little bit higher. The reason I like to use six cups of cocoa coir is that I get more bang for my buck out of my cocoa. Uh, I basically just get to use my product a lot longer. Like one brick will last me uh, about 10 more trays if I cut that extra two cups of cocoa off of it. So normally I suggest to people to use about eight cups to 10 cups because uh, that way you have much better water retention and you don't have to worry about watering as frequently. frequently. Now I know I come into my grow space twice a day and I like to water twice a day so I can get away with six cups of cocoa Basically, I can get away with less medium that holds less water because I water more fre frequently. If you want to water less frequently, just add more cocoa and more water uh, like once a day or something. So let's pretend this is nice and even and flat and everything. And then what I did is I sprinkled my sunflower seeds directly on top of this growing medium. And then after I sprinkled my seeds on it, I added some water to it. So I just misted the seeds. And then I took an additional single tray. I set that on top. And then I took 14 pounds of weight and I set that on top of the sunflowers. And this is all I did for the germination period. Twice a day, I would come out, I would lift up my top tray, I would add some more water to the seeds and the medium, and I would set that top tray back on top of it and I'd put it right back onto the shelf. 
after we finished the germination period, which is generally about three days of sunflowers, you just wanna get the seeds hold, seed holes off is really what you're looking to do. Then what you do is you take this top tray that had weight on it, knock off that leaf, and you flip it, and I used it as blackout for one day. And what that does is it just black, takes away all the light and allows the crop to stand up and kind of get itself oriented for trying to find light and stretch out their stems just a little bit so that whenever we go to harvest, it makes it easier. We don't have to cut so low down to the medium. We can cut a little bit higher up because we have taller stems because of the blackout. After we did one day of blackout, I then took this top tray and then I just got it out of my way. Now let's pretend we have our crop growing here and everything's looking super happy and healthy. What we did after the blackout is we took it and we slid that crop into the light and then we just top watered it. Now top watering is incredibly simple. All you need to do is take some form of liquid and you just pour it on top. So we use a nutrient water, which is Ocean Solutions 2-0-3. Uh, mixed with our regular tap water and then pH balance to the 6.0 range. And then I simply took a two cup measuring cup and I watered it twice a day with that two cups until we got to this point about three days later. Now it is incredibly simple to grow like this, but it does have challenges like I said. We have to be careful that we're not knocking the crop over. We have to be careful about the moisture being trapped in the canopy. Whenever you top water, you can't really see your medium as well. So you have to kind of guess if you've given this enough water. One thing I love with bottom watering is I can actually see the medium change color and I have a very good visual indication of how much water is actually in that tray. And with bottom watering, what's really kind of nice is the trays are set up so they have holes distributed every now and then. So it's not just like one open uh, bottom, there's holes everywhere. So whenever I pour water into a tray for bottom watering, the water actually has kind of an even chance to get all throughout the tray versus with top watering, you just have to be really careful how you pour. So you have to just kind of take your time and make sure you're distributing a pretty equal amount of water throughout the tray because you'll notice whenever you start top watering, like I said, if you can't see your medium, you could be like, okay, I added two cups to this grow medium and you'll notice one side of your tray is like super happy and standing up and the other side just could be like completely flopped over. And that's because you didn't do a good job of evenly distributing that water. That's something that we've done quite a bit. So it is something challenging with top watering. All right, so that kind of covers just a few of the challenges with top watering, the differences between bottom watering and all of that. What I'm gonna do now is I'm actually gonna harvest this tray with you guys, to kind of show you what it's like harvesting this and then I'll show you whenever we pull out the root medium, how much easier it is because we only have one tray now instead of two trays and why that is actually beneficial. So let me get kind of set up here and I'll start harvesting this straight into some other sunflowers that I harvested in a different video. So I'll see you guys in just a second once I've got my equipment. Okay, I have my harvesting station set up and it's incredibly simple. All I need is my knife. This is our favorite knife because it cuts extremely well. It stays very, very sharp. It's very easy to sharpen. And then I've got a digital scale with a stainless steel colander on top of it and my plastic bag that I'm going to be harvesting into inside of that steel colander so that I can record my harvest weight for this product. That's something we like to do. You guys don't have to record your harvest weight if you don't want to. We just love to take down the data and see uh, what kind of factors we did and how it actually affects the crop itself. So that's why we like to record all of our data. And if you're a commercial grower, it's just really good practice to just figure out how many grams you're getting out of each tray. Let's go ahead and harvest this. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my knife here. I'm gonna take my sunflowers right here. Ooh, and you can see we got a nice, beautiful red stem. And that's because I did allow these to dehydrate fully for one day. And if you're curious about that, Mandy's got a video on dehydration you should definitely check out. So now that I've got my beautiful crop right here, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this knife, I'm gonna take my hand, kind of scoop it around these, and then I'm just gonna give a nice little graze through here. I had to do it two passes. You see sometimes you'll lose some and they'll fall over on the edge uh, to your table or something like that. That's okay, we'll grab those in just a second. So now we've got our first cut right here and everything is looking really, really awesome and happy. I'm gonna take this, plop it into my scale and my bag, and I see that we're starting to record weight, so everything's awesome. Now, again, like I said, sometimes sunflowers and other crops will fall over onto your table. That's why we like to have a stainless steel table so we can sanitize it between grows. And that way, if any fall over, we can simply just grab those, kind of pick them up and toss them into the bag over here. All right, now I'm gonna get to chopping here. And something that's pretty cool is I can actually, you can see how dense those roots are. I mean, man, that is a great looking root structure. 
There's a tiny bit of browning in there, but overall it's very healthy and white and looking super nice. So now I'm, all I'm gonna do is just keep on chopping here. And you'll notice something that I do after I cut with my knife. If you see the knife now, you see how it's got all this little debris after I just did a few cuts. I take it on the edge of the tray and I slide it across. And what that does is it just kind of cleans off all that extra debris on the um, knife. And that way I don't cut that into my next cut and get it all over the product. And you'll notice as I'm harvesting, I'm doing this a decent amount above uh, the actual grow medium itself so that I'm not getting all this stuff down in here into my harvest. So you see every now and then I get like a little seed hole or something in there. That's all right, all you do is take your finger and just kind of knock it off. But the reason we're chopping so high is because we don't want any of this like debris, seed holes, cocoa coir, anything like that. You just want your nice, beautiful product with its nice, clean stems and cotyledons. All right, speed harvest time. Bam, 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 bam. And if you'll actually follow me over here to the bag, I'll show you guys a little trick. So we like to use these bags, these produce bags. And what I like to do is once they get so tall, you'll notice that the product will start falling over and stuff like that. So what you wanna do, kinda of just give it a few good shakes and it'll really pack those sunflowers down and help it stand up a little bit easier and allow you to fit just a little bit more product into that bag so that you're not wasting more plastic baggies. I'm very happy with this grow. So I will say they're just a little bit taller than I would like. And really, if you, if you think your sunflowers are too tall, all you gotta do is take your knife and you can just harvest a little bit higher or you can take it after you cut it and just kind of give them just a nice little, and see, like I said, this knife just cuts so well that now I've cut off a lot of that stem and you've got like a really nice presentation on these sunflowers, they're not too tall, like you saw, and then you just leave all that stem right there on top of your grow medium so you can just toss that out whenever you compost your grow medium. Here's where it gets a little awkward on the edges. So I like to do like a little whoop, like swoop de whooped That's what I'm gonna call it. It's a swoop de whooped You'll notice stuff flinging. And that is just part of microgreens. They're a little messy. Anytime you work with dirt and veggies and all that, you're just gonna be flinging a little bit around and it's kind of fun, so get used to it. Now the last cuts. It's really awkward when it's laying over like that because you're kind of cutting towards your hand. So you wanna be really careful about how you chop this. And I like to kind of angle the blade down and away from me for these last little cuts and then make sure I really get up and underneath uh, my hand there so I'm not chopping my hand because I don't want to harvest my hand. I want to harvest microgreens. <laughs> All right, great. This product looks absolutely amazing. We have a super abundant bag here of sunflowers now. I mean, look at this. That is a huge, big old bag of sunflowers. And out of this one tray, we actually got one pound and 12.2 ounces. So we almost got two pounds of sunflowers out of this single tray right here, which is pretty incredible. Now, again, there are pretty long stems on this. So had I say harvested this a lot shorter, we cut off the stems, that would chop down on our harvest weight, obviously, because you're not putting so much fresh produce into there. But I feel like it's a much better product without all that crazy stem. Now it is time for the most exciting part of growing microgreens, and that is taking some of these beauties that you just harvested and getting to enjoy them and like, wow. Super nutty tasting, very fresh. Mm, nice texture to them. They chew up nicely. They don't stick around. They're not too woody. Mm. Overall, God, I love sunflowers. Oh, that is so tasty. Mm. So there are so many ways to use sunflowers. You just chunk this on your salads. You mix this into your sandwiches, throw it on top of your pizzas, on your hot dogs if you're a weirdo. Uh, you can put it on peanut butter and jelly sandwiches, which is something that I actually would strongly suggest. Take a little bit of peanut butter and jelly, throw these bad boys in between, and you will have yourself an almost healthy sandwich. Almost healthy. It depends on what you use for peanut butter and jelly, I suppose, and also your bread source. And it is an amazing thing. I swear to you, try it. Anyways, so we have harvested the product, we've tasted the product, we've talked a little bit about how we've done this. Now I'm gonna show you guys how easy it is going to be for me to clean this up. And all you gotta do is kind of grab your little leftover stems right here and you can lift and you can see how easily it's gonna be to clean this medium. And what we like to do is we take this and we'll actually roll up this root mat. Now this is like, we had a little bit of grow medium in here. Like I said, we use that six cups of cocoa coir. But as you can see, this is now a majority of just roots. I would say that there's actually probably more roots than cocoa in here. And that's what I love about using this low density of cocoa coir 
is that we're not really wasting it. We're just giving it enough to allow those roots to really get in there and start to hold on to some water. So what I do now is I roll this up. I'll take this and I will actually take that out to our compost. And if you guys are interested in checking out some information on what we do with our grow medium after we harvest, be sure to check out our website because we now have blogs where we talk about how to grow microgreens, uh, what we do with our medium after harvest, comparison of different medium types and things like that. So there's a ton of great information there and that's www.onthegrow.net. And again, check out the blog section because there is tons of great information. We'll leave a link to it in the description below as well for you guys. So that is really it, you guys. Now that we've got this mat ready to go into the compost, all I have to do is once this is pulled out, I'll just simply sanitize and scrub this tray and then we are good to go for the next grow. That was literally it. It was super easy to do. There's a few downsides with top watering, but if you do it cautiously and you are aware of the potential issues and how to avoid them, then you will have successful grow after successful grow. Now this is, I think our like a second attempt at trying this with top watering. So again, it's one of those things that we always encourage you to practice, play around with, because it, every grow space is gonna be different, every seed batch is gonna be different, every water source is gonna be different. There's just so many things that can cause different variables in your grow. So you have to stay flexible with microgreens. You can't just be like, oh, I'm gonna follow this to an exact T, because sometimes that works, but the majority of the time is your climate or something varies very, very slightly, and that could throw off the grow in a direction. You just have to kind of be willing to like, okay, I'm noticing this and how can I fix that? All right guys, I hope that you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give us a thumbs up. If you dislike it, give us a thumbs down. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them in the section below and we'd love to get those answered for you as soon as we possibly can. Our website is, like I said earlier, www.onthegrow.net and our Facebook and our Instagram are both at On The Grow Farms. Thank you guys so much for the support. I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. We've got a ton more content coming, so stay tuned for that. Keep on believing.